Okay guys, in this video, I want to go over product research using Helium 10. And more so specifically, I want to discuss first what not to do, right? There's, there's so much information out there, especially here on YouTube. And I want to, I, I've just been watching some videos and I want to discuss personally what I think you should not do, but then I want to direct you the right way and uh, really show you how to find hot products using Helium 10. Uh, before we get started, my name is Mark McKellar. I'm the uh, founder of the Amazon FBA Accelerator. And uh, if you like this video or if you want me to continue to post free content about Amazon FBA, please just subscribe to my channel below so I know that uh, I'm spending my time well worth spent and uh, continue, pr continue to produce content for you. So please uh, go ahead and subscribe and let's get started. All right, so before I, I start to show you how to find hot products, and how to find uh, you know high sought after products. I want to start off by maybe just giving a tip of something you don't want to do. And uh, there's lots of things that you don't want to do. But I would say the biggest thing is you don't want to just copy and paste what everyone else is doing. You don't want to just do the same thing everyone else is doing. You've got to find a way to be different. You got to find a way to be unique. And there are a million ways to be unique, especially even with this product research strategy I'm about to show you. But what I'm getting at is you know love all of the content on, on YouTube, especially online by Amazon FBA. But I, I, you know, I was watching this, this video and the person recommended um, to go onto Amazon's homepage and search under the new releases, under the new releases products and say, okay, these are brand new products. Uh, you can find uh, very hot selling new products that are really selling well and you, you know, and they fit in the, in your, you know, parameter of guidelines. And what we're really looking for is a price point of 15 to $65. That's going to keep your cost of goods low and not too expensive. We want at least a thousand people searching for it a month, at least a thousand people. And we want the average review count to be at most 500. And if you keep watching this video, uh, finish it till the end, I'm going to show you probably the biggest thing that people get wrong when they look at average review count. But another note on search volume, at least a thousand people a month is awesome. That is, that's plenty of people, right? That, that's, you know, over 33 people a, a day searching for your product, you know, and you might think, well, is that enough? Absolutely, and it depends. I have one product and the search volume is, I'm not kidding you, it's 800 people a month, but it kills it. It sells like three units a day. Am I gonna tell you what it is? No, because I don't want you to copy it, but, all I'm telling you is like, it, it, would, it's, it was so niche. I'm kind of one of the only real sellers. I mean, there's like a few others, but because it's like, I took, up, I took so much time to find it and to launch it. And I just did my homework. Not a lot of people know about it. And so, you know, that's a comparative advantage that I've developed by really doing the work. Anyways, if we go on to this new releases and let's say we click kitchen and dining, you know, you could easily think, okay, this uh, tumbler with handle and straw lid, these are really popular right now. It's between 15 and $65 and it's under 500 reviews. Let's do that. All right. So if we pulled that product on Helium 10 uh, and you know, the, the, this person, and I think they're, you know, they're probably a really good person. They, they have well intentions, but uh, I just don't agree with it. If you look at the, oh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's pull on the information. All right, you can easily think, oh my gosh, it only has 20, 279 reviews and the revenue is 677. Like that product kills it. If I just sell the same thing, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do so well. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just slay it, right? All right, well, let's really think about this. If we go down and we're using Helium 10 discount code below this video, Let's go to the product's keywords. All right, if we click that, and I already pulled it up. We click this product's keywords. We could find the keywords that it's ranking for, all right? And yeah, this is a, the thing is, is this is a branded product. That's probably the one, the biggest thing is you don't wanna go against big brands, but let's say if we, if we um, you know, use the keyword tumblers with lids and straws, the search volume is over a thousand. Um, but the competing products is 10,000 and more. Like that is so meant that 
I wouldn't go over anything over one or 2000, but you know, if we click that and we say, okay, we're going to launch this product because it's within our price point and it's within our, um, you know, review count. If we pull the extension up and look at what the average review count is on this keyword, at least it is. It's over 4,200 and you can't compete with that unless you're a big company and you have a huge spend, you know, you know, you have a huge ad spend or budget. So that's just kind of not going to work. So what I'm saying is like, don't be disillusioned by, oh, sweet. I found this random product. Well, how are people going to find that product when they search for it online? They're going to be typing in these keywords. They're going to type in, typing in thermal tumbler, tumbler with handle. And these keywords that it's ranking for that are the most sought after are so expensive. So that's just a big no, no. All right. Um, so I would say like, that would be the first thing. And the, probably the main thing that I would do is to not just copy what everyone else is doing. All right. So, uh, that's, you know, anyways, putting that aside of what not to do, I'm going to show you the beginning steps to find hot products and to be able to launch them and actually make money on Amazon, actually make a $500 profit a month, $2,000 profit a month. I've done it. I've had students in my course do it. And I can tell you right now it is possible, but you need the correct information and you need a correct mentor. Now, let me go over this search criteria. The price point of 15 to $65. You want to find a keyword with at least a thousand searches a month. And you want to find an average review count at most for 500, you know, anywhere like at most 400 to 500. And it just depends, but I would not go over 500. Now, let me just say real quick, these are the beginning steps, right? So half of it is finding a product that you're capable of launching to the top of page one. But then the other half of the equation is how can I add value to the customer? How can I be different? You can be different in so many ways from the competition. You can offer a new color. You can offer a new size. You could bundle with an existing product. You can bundle it with a complementary product. Maybe you're selling uh, a tumbler, like in the previous example, and you're going to bundle it with four extra straws. No one else is doing that on Amazon, I guarantee you, right? There's just so many ways, you know? So anyways, we're gonna come into here to Helium 10, and the main product research tool we're gonna use is Blackbox. You've got to have Helium 10, you've gotta have a good product research tool, and I recommend Helium 10 uh, over anything else. There's many different ways to find keywords or find potential products through the products tab, through keywords, which is what people type in on type into Amazon, what they're looking for. You can find it through competitors, through your specific niche, through product targeting. But I'm gonna go with keywords, right? So what I wanna first start off with is I wanna find a, a product that's being searched at least a thousand times a month. And we want the monthly revenue to be anywhere from five to 15,000, all right? Sometimes if, if, it, if it's super, super high, you're gonna invite a lot, a lot of competition. So we don't want to go berserk, but we want to start making money. We want to make at least a thousand bucks on Amazon in our first month. That's, that's my goal for my students. And we want the price point to be anywhere from 15 to $65. And we want the review count. Let's just say at most 400 this time. I know I have 500 before, but I'm going to do 400. All right. Now categories. I'm going to be real quick. I know I don't have them written down, but I'm going to tell you which categories you should and you should not sell in. Um, no, yes. Autom so arts, crafts, and so on, yes. Automotive, I would say no in general, but it depends on the niche. Maybe you really know cars, and so you could find really great products. Just stay away from anything patented. Baby, yes. Beauty and personal care, you could, but you're going to get in, you're going to uh, possibly find a lot of makeup, and, you know, like, you're going to be competing with, like, these huge makeup companies that really focus, like, dominate the space. So, that's a possibility. Books, no. C unless that's what you specialize in. CDs and vinyl, no. Camera and photo products, I would say no. Cell phone, no. Clothing, jewelry, no. Collectible currencies, no. Computers and accessories, once again, possibly. Um, I found a couple of very niche computer products, but for the most part, you don't want to compete with like Dell, Apple, etc. Electronics, no. Um, I'm just going to say yes to the ones that you should. Health and household, yes. Home and kitchen, yes. Industrial and scientific, no. Kitchen and dining, yes. 
Um, movies and TV, no. Music and streams, no. Uh, office products, yes. Patio, lawn, and garden, yes. Pet supplies, yes. Software, uh, no. Sports and outdoors, yes. Home to tools and home improvement, yes. Toys and games, yes. Video games, no. So I just re- I just said those to you. Write them down. Um, and I don't want to look at all of them once. I like to go one at a time. So actually, I'll, I'll do like a, I'll do like three at a time. Let's go patio lawn and garden and pet supplies. Let's search. Hummingbird nest. All right. So this is fitting our our criteria to start off with. Um, you know the 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 price point's good. I don't see a ton of. Um, huge average review counts. But what I like about this keyword is there, it, everything's different. Like everything is, is very unique and different looking. It's not the exact same thing. You know how you see some stuff on Amazon, everyone's like selling the exact same thing. Would we'll not do that. So review count is, or sorry, revenue, average revenue is really, really good. Um, this is This is how I read this information. If I come up with a two piece or a four piece hummingbird set, and I find something similar to this, and if I can create an add value, as in be different, and I look at the review count, and let's say I can over time accumulate 40 reviews, 244, I could potentially do revenue around four to 8,000, maybe even up to 13,000 a month. That's absolutely possible. Now, the next thing that I would think of is keywords. This is great, like 1,000 a month, but we want something we, we want to find other keywords uh, to other ways to say that product. Now that's going to be in a different video, but we found a good potential product. Now, other things to consider. What is the number of competing products? Is the product seasonal? We could check that by checking here, go to all time. And we see, we see that there's low months and high months. We clearly see that like, you know, you know, around the warmer months that it's more peaking, but then during like the colder months, it's not super high. It looked like it really peaked December 10th for some reason, maybe the holidays. I don't know. Maybe that was prime day or something, but we want to see a constant stream of at least a thousand searches a month. And this is a little up and down. I would continue to find at least three other keywords that are a thousand searches a month before I proceed on this product, but it's a great potential product. Another thing, is it restricted or hazmat? You know, it basically does it have any chemicals? Is it patented? There's some categories that are restricted on Amazon. And that is not the case for this one, I can tell you right now. Product size and dimensions. This is a great product in terms of doing FBA because it's small and it's light. And with the FBA fees of how they are right now, you don't want to, you know, like launch one of these big bulky products where it's like weighs a ton and super big. Uh, you're just going to have to be paying fees up the wazoo. So I like that as my seller count. Um, how can I add value and be different? If I were, if you, if someone told me, Mark, I don't care what you do right now, but you have to launch a product in this, um, you know, for this keyword, or for this sector, I would absolutely look at every product on first on page one. I will read through at least a few reviews for each product. I would see what people like, what people don't like, what people complain about. I would look at the pictures and I would think, I, I would force myself to think, how could they be better? Not only that, when I search for suppliers and, and in this other video, or uh, I'll post a video in, in the description of suppliers, or of like how to find a supplier, but I'm not going to go through that this video. When I'm on Alibaba and I'm looking for suppliers, I would look at the company that is, I would look at the, the factory that is selling hummingbird nests. And I'll look at the other things that they sell because most likely they are in this category and they probably have products that they can easily bundle with this that maybe add on 50 cents, you know, something super cheap. So I would instantly uh, try that uh, or, or like try different ways to think outside the box to be different. All right, let's move on. Uh, wow, that was a first product and that was already good potential. Um, inflatable Easter Bunny, you know, it's almost Easter. I would not, I would, you know, stay away from that. Um, Caterpillar for dogs. This is a super low, oh, cool. Okay, 
this could be a great product, but my initial feedback is one, you have to charge it. Electric, batteries, electronics in general. Apple, they have more, um, they have more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They have, they have, they have more, more liquid money than the federal government for crying out loud. And sometimes when they ship out iPhones, they just don't work. You know, it's just the beast of, of electronics and batteries. And what you're going to find with the electronics is um, an, un, an unpredictable number of uh, returns. And it's not, that doesn't mean that it, like whoever you source it from, it's garbage, but you just, it's out of your control. And like, I guarantee you the return rate for this is far lower than this easily because of the of the charging uh aspect sometimes the charger just stops working you know it's out of your control and you don't want to deal with that so i would pass on that personally uh tofu litter welcome sign for front porch standing okay pros and cons about this one uh and this would be my last last example uh because i don't want to make this video too long but the that this is how you you know you would start product research anyways um, what I like about this is there's so many different ways to say this. I can just tell, and you can be very, very broad in what you'd want it to look like. Like there are so many different ways that you can have welcome home sign. And let's say like home decor is your niche and you're just good at it. Like you could really dominate the commerce, the, com the competition. But when I'm looking on the other side of the coin, I'm thinking, how do I know exactly what the customer is looking for? Like, do they want this design? Do they want that design? And really what's gonna tell you is the data. So I would always come back here, you know, open up Chrome extension on Helium 10. And I would look and see which ones are dominating. So, you know, really like you could see that a lot of the revenue, a lot of people are buying these, these few. I would probably not launch whatever this guy's selling. Uh, I would launch something with these guys are selling, et cetera. So the, the, this is just a very great, you know, starting into trying to find these niche products. But I'll tell you right now, and I'm just being completely honest with you, this is the first half of the category. This is the first half of the equation. This is how you can get to the top of page one. But just because you launch up to the top of page one, and I've done it for people all the time, it's, it's really not that hard if you do it correctly. That doesn't mean people are just gonna buy you know, whatever you're selling. People will buy from you when you either, one, have the lowest price, two, have the most reviews, and three, when you stand out and offer something different. And when you're starting off, you do not want to offer the lowest price because then you won't make any margin. You don't want to just win off of, well, you, you can't win off of re reviews right when you start off because when you're competing with two or 500 reviews, um, you know, it's going to take a while to accumulate to that. So three, what you want to do is have the best product photos, the best listing, but you want to figure out how can I add value? How can I be different? How can I really um, come up with something better than the competition is? And I promise you, if you do that, that's how you can be successful on Amazon FBA. Anyways, if you have any more questions, feel free to comment down below or uh, you know, feel free to join my, my accelerator course be happy to help you out but like i said please subscribe to this video and thank you for watching if you're sick in here this long and i'll see you in the next video